Jesus. And you know, at times, you know, Jesus said because of their faith, because of their faith, the sins, his sins were forgiven. Jesus said when he saw their faith, he forgave the man his sin, and the man was ill. You know, uh, sometimes you know, you know, as friends, we have here yeah, friends of y'all. You know, and I thank y'all. You lifted me up, and we lifted one another up. Sometimes we be so down we can't lift ourselves up. But Jesus said, "Hey, when he see the face of others, friends, he said they sins can be forgiven in return. It's a blessing. You know, I believe that it's a blessing." On anyone who left their friends up. God blesses them. The blessing, the blessing returned to them. I believe the Lord showed me that. You know, whenever, you know, we it's too many today, you know, uh, Lord say, hey, uh, if a brother or sister overtake with a fall, you would as the spirit restore such a one. That was the Lord say. Not saying conceal our sin, but we confess our fault one to another. That we can be healed. You know. So um, that's what I pretty much the Lord gave to me, that he said as the, as the friends of this particular person that was so downtrodden, you know, I think Brother Stephen said uh, sometimes, you know, you can be so down, all we can say is Jesus have mercy. We can be so down. <laughs> I mean, circumstance can beat us down so, so much, all we can say, Lord have mercy. You know, and Lord, hey, pray for somebody out there, please pray for me, because I'm I'm, I'm too tired to pray for myself. I'm too beaten down. I don't even feel like praying for myself. Somebody pray for me. But right here, uh, it, it showed the illustration that the Bible said that the man was so down that his friends lifted him up to Jesus, and he was forgiven. His friends done that. You know, now that was our friends right there. When you're down, they can lift you up. And Jesus said he didn't see his faith, he said, because of their faith. So that showed me friends can intercede for you and pray for you when you're going through. You know. And the Bible said, blessed are the merciful, they should obtain mercy. You know. We should at times, you know, I see that uh, you know, we're going through we Bible said righteous righteous man falls many times. But uh, uh, we should see at times, you know, uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, blessed are the merciful, they shall obtain mercy. That's why, you know, if anybody, if they're going through or on drugs or if they uh, stumble and fall, you know, the Bible said we, we should try to restore them, restore them, restore them, you know. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to say this, I'm going to close off for a minute, but uh, let me get to my testimony right fast. Let me get to my testimony right fast, little brother Steve. You know, a brother I had ran into, he was in real estate, I understand. He was in real estate, and me and him, I, I ran across his brother quite a bit, you know. And I'm encouraged what God does when I when I go through adversity. We know that God is having left us, because when we go through a serious adversity, uh, Arthur, when he steps through, we know God has to let his hand off of us. Amen. If we go into a serious adversity, you know. We're going through something, God step in, God say, hey, I'm still with you. So this brother, I know he was in the real estate. I, I think you know him. He went up to the, he be up to the computers quite a bit. You, you know who I'm talking about, don't you? Well, me and him, <laughs> me and him, Arthur, every time when I see him, uh, he know him, man. Every time when I see him, you know, he really talk about like, he got so much going on. And so when I see him, you know, he always, you know, uh, uh, he always asking me, for, for some help, do I know some, know some property that he's interested in? And he puts out this front, man, that, it, you know, I, I'm not doubting the guy, you know, uh, uh, from, you know, image is good, but don't try to really uh, push yourself out like you're more than what you are. You know, he really pushes himself like he'll Bill Gates or Donald Trump or something. And he really, he, when I see him all the time, man, he was trying to really belittle me, you know. And I say, look here, man. I say, I don't look for you. I say, you look for me. Mm. I say, I be trying to dodge you when I see you. You know. And I say, you're not impressing me. You know, I say, I appreciate the fact, uh, brother, that, you know, you're really trying to uh, get yourself going. And, you know, you got the I appreciate that. But, man, I say, look, now, you're not no Bill Gates now. You're not no Donald, you're not no Donald Trump. Mm. I said, every time when I see you, man, you're walking just like I am. 
you know, when I see you not driving no car, I say, I don't see no thousands of dollars you put out in your pocket. So I don't know what you're trying to do to try to impress somebody. I say, I'm not trying to down you, but I say, when you're trying to down me, then I gotta call you out. You know, so, and we had a, a back and forth exchange. We really had a heated exchange because when he was coming, you know, some, you, you, you ever get to that state end that somebody is really needling you and say, hey, one of these days, we're we going to have it out. We're we going to get to that day. You know, you know, your patience just runs in, and we got to that moment, me and him. So we, he got on there, Stephen. So uh, he's got belligerent. I said, okay, man. I said, look here, man. I said, when I see you, man, it's on. I said, no doubt about it. I said, brother, when I see you, brother, it's on. So uh, he hung up, you know. So I know the place where he hang out at. Okay, I wasn't looking for trouble, man. I, I wasn't looking for trouble. But it's a normal place where I usually go. And I said, well, hey, if I just so happen to run into him, we're going to have it out. Me and him, you know. I said, I, I said, I'm tired of this brother. You know, I come to him. I'm trying to help him out. I try to build him up. He started trying to push me down. And then when I call him out, he get in. So you know what I'm, you know what I'm being off. So I told him, I said, man, when I see you, man, it's on. I told him that. So what happened was, I didn't see him for a while, you know. The places where he was at, I didn't bump into him. But usually, either he's way in Harold, you know, he's usually on the south side. But I see him, he's way in Harold Washington Library. That's where he's at now, he's way over there. And when I see him, really, I've been trying to dodge him. Because, you know, because, you know, really, you know, really, he's trying to get off the ground with a dream. And, you know, and he's really trying to put on the front end and he really got some things going, you know. So I was trying to dodge a man. I was really going on my way. Well, well, at that time, when me and him, when we had that confrontation, and, you know, I saw the spots where it was. I said, well, you know, I said, hey, these are the spots I usually go to. I'm not ducking it hard. I said, hey, Lord, whatever comes out, we're going to have to come out. Me and him, we're going to have it out. So, I went up to the library office and I kind of kind of looked around. I wasn't looking for trouble, just seeing was he around in that area, you know. So I didn't see him, you know, so you know I went on back, you know, to my daily thing, what I was doing. But if I just so happened to be in that area, I kind of be on God to see where he at, you know. So in the meantime, the Lord just told me just let it go. You know, just, you know, he said, don't look for trouble, just let it go. You know. So and yesterday. Yesterday, I got dropped off at 95th Street. I had done some work with a pastor of mine. And uh, you know, Tommy Clark, uh, I'd done some painting for him. Uh, so, yeah, but I'd done some painting for him. So he dropped me off at 95th, Arthur, he dropped me off at 95th. Now, when people do wrong, and it kind of made it how, I don't care what you do, you're gonna run into that person. You know, and when you least expect when, when, when you do wrong. You know, so when I got off, when I, when I got dropped off at 95th, I was going, I was getting on the L station, Arthur. And as I was going inside, he was coming out. He was coming out the door. And he recognized me. So he went, he said, uh, so I looked at him, you know, you know who he is, I So when he came out, he said, uh, what's up, man? So it took me a time to realize who he was. I mean, late at night, you know, Stephen. So uh, I looked at him and uh, I said, yeah, man, I said, what's up, man? So uh, he said, uh, he said, what's going on? So when I, I said, oh yeah, now I know who we got now. Yeah, you know. So I said, uh, I said, man, uh, what was your problem, man? I said, what was the stuff you was talking about uh, all up on the phone, man? I said, what was your problem, man? And then so Arthur, you know what he said? He said, uh, I don't remember. You know, he said nothing. I said, no, man. I said, you was talking this on the phone, man. I said, what was your problem, man? He said, look, uh, he said, man, I'm sorry. He said, uh, you know, you said you're a Christian man, right? He said, why don't we just squash that? Okay. He said, why don't we just squash it? You know. So uh, I said, okay. I said, uh, you came like I apologize, okay? So it came to me. I said, well, I said, Lord, if you intervene that way, and then let me know, you know, hey, I'm going to forgive one leave it alone. You know, you have God. So I saw how God intervened. But Arthur, he was kind of a little bigger than me, though. You know, I didn't say he was kind of a little bigger than me. But I was ready, you know, to confront him. 
you know, and whatever went on, went down. But God intervened. You know, he apologized. And then he said, let's squash it, let's put it behind us. You know. So um, that was uh, pretty much a, uh, oh, okay, okay, all right, all right. Oh, okay. The moral of the story. Oh, okay. Why, why did you say that? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting to say this, uh, you know, I was, uh, uh, and, you know, oh, okay. I see uh, when we had that, that fellowship okay. with God, I, I, you know, God is concerned about in every area, you know, was, 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 the, was, was uh, disturbing. But really, this problem was rationing with me all the time. That's I'm happy. You know, how I'm figured out, I say, hey, and sometimes when we want to do something, God will intervene in that. You know, say, you're going to handle it in a better way. He'll touch the person. And God touched the person. All I can say is God touched him. You know, really. You know, God really touched him. I'm not saying he's not no coward either. He's not a coward either. But God touched him. You know, God touched him. I'll say, hey, man, I'm sorry. Let's squash this. You know, a confrontation brother. He, he, he's confrontational often. But God did touch him. So, what I'm saying is that, I'm going to check that out. Uh, I'll have to take a look and see what's, is that somebody uh, frustrated? Uh, oh, it's a car alarm. Okay. So, you know, what I'm, you know, what I'm saying is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, what I'm saying is that, that, you know, situations I'm in, I see God moving and, and intervening in some situations that I get into, dangerous situations. And then I'm trying to figure out, Lord, how I'm going to work this out. Yeah. You know, how I'm going to figure it out, how I'm going to work this out. But I see God intervening in it and, and, and working the problem out. Yeah. So, I, you know, it just encourages me to know that when God is working, awesome. when I see him, he's constantly working in situations, and I say, Lord, thank you. I say, you haven't left me. I say, you still got a plan. Yeah. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. You put your hands together, praise God. It can get tough sometimes interacting with people, people challenging us and frustration building up. Resistance come our way. God still has a plan. He's always uh, ready for us to call on him for help when we're dealing with people on the job in school. Amen. He said, you can call me anytime and I'll be able to move my hand and cause deliverance and victory to come your way. You can always call on me. Praise God. Amen. We're going to let uh, Minister Ann, if, if you feel led to share your uh, strategies, a few strategies from Chicago, uh, you can come up in about five minutes if you feel uh, a, a, a certain end so you can share uh, how God anointed you to put it together because uh, I want to purchase me one uh, today or whenever I can get it from you. Yeah, in five minutes, I'm going to let you just talk talk to the people, talk to us, and I give us about, you know, a uh, foundation on how that transpired and what it does, how impactful that is. So, amen. Thank God for the uh, all the saints here and uh, Facebook Live family. God bless you all. God bless your families. Amen. We're just going to lift this offering up to the Lord and begin to uh, give it to God because it belongs to him. Amen. And then we're going to expect some supernatural outpourings. Praise God. Amen. Amen. So, Father God, we thank you for letting us in your house today. And uh, we're able to sit down in these beautiful chairs and able to come together, sons and daughters, to tell of your excellent greatness, and to talk about how awesome and mighty you are. And, Father God, we give thanks for allowing us to bring tithes and offerings and gifts and presents and substance and finances and silver and gold and abundance, rubies and pearls, gems. God, able to bring our gifts and talents and energy, our time, oh God, our heart, our mind, our strength, our soul, to give it all to you, oh God, as we begin to uh, present ourselves as an offering and the strength that we have, our substance. So we lift this up, we give thanks. And Father, I thank you, God, that it belongs to you, tithes and offerings. And we praise you, Lord, for supernatural outpourings. And we ask you to multiply. We thank you for doing it. Oh, God, exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or even think. Father, have mercy upon us. I thank you, God, for getting all in our finances and giving us opportunities, oh, God, and open doors for new jobs.
jobs and careers, opportunities, oh God, to create our own business, and uh, giving us the faith we need to be able to activate it, the faith we need to launch out into these new business ideas and endeavors and projects. Hallelujah, Father, we thank you for putting the right people around us, people that's filled with faith, have wisdom of God, and that's filled with the Holy Ghost, people that love you and love your people. And Father, I thank you, Father, for the outpour, multiplying our seed so, and bringing forth a great harvest.
Google. Okay, uh, those that's interested in this, this uh, the manuals, the prayer strategies, praise God, uh, she's got a lot of experience. She just don't talk it, but amen, she's out in the streets, uh, east, west, uh, utilizing it, using it. And she brings many people to my church, amen. She don't have to do that, but you know, she's helping ministries all over. She's bringing many people to my services. Praise God. So you all can look up D. Period M. Stuckey. You can Google that name. Now on Amazon, how would they go about? Uh, once they Google my name, it show the different bookstores. Uh, okay. Okay, so okay, the bookstores will come up as you Google the name. Yes. So uh, I'm going to purchase a few books tonight. Some type of way uh, we can do the transaction. And I'm going to show you all that's interested. I'm going to show you on my Facebook and Twitter. And Instagram, how it looks, and uh, be able to uh, those that want a copy to check this out. Amen. This may be some of the things that will help you break through in areas concerning your marriage or your ministry or your business, concerning your personal uh, walk with Jesus Christ. Some things in there will may maybe help you break through. Praise God. And so as you, Amen, support the woman of God. Amen. Uh, I know uh, many blessings will come back on you as you're sowing and helping her do God's work. Amen. Praise you. You're supporting the kingdom of God. Amen. You're helping advance the kingdom. Praise God. So we'll get all that uh, in plain English on the websites, and I'll show you all the exact names. And I'm going to show you all the materials and the books and manuals as I personally get them. Amen. It look like my secretary is showing up, y'all. <laughs> my secretary is here pulling up in the limousine, y'all. All right, all right. Amen. So put your hands together for God and use an end to give God the praise for that. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Yes, so much. We got our security guards here. Amen. Amen. Brother Eric helping out and keeping them doors safe and man of God back here. Amen. We got security, uh, deeper security. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for the brothers taking time out their schedules. Amen. 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 So, um, amen. We're going to look into uh, a few scriptures here and see how the Lord will lead us. Praise God. We got, maybe I can teach for 20 minutes here or something amen. like that. Amen. Praise God. So, Father God, we just thank you for the word as we enter into this. And, Father God, help us to receive revelation. Help us to uh, uh, understand, oh God, what you're saying. Holy Spirit, teach and illuminate. We rebuke every spirit, all kinds of witches and warlocks, crazy spirits, spirits of all kinds of Jezebels and coming up in my service, and evil spirits trying to, trying to shut my ministry down the past three years. We had to wrestle some demons. Hey Amen. My dad and my mom, they came on the wrong day. I had my parents up in here, and demons coming up in here. We was bound them demons in 2015. Hey Amen. Things manifesting for my mom and dad here in my back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to, trying to shut me down and try to come home to me. Right. You know, and all this, you know, the demon manifesting, and lust, and weird stuff going on. But uh, in the name of Jesus, we bind every attack, every power, every dark, every ambition and desire of the enemy to try to shut this ministry down. My friends and their families coming apart, even my members in JCM Global Ministries, amen. We take authority over those forces and we cast them out. We send them to the dry places, even to the spiritual prisons. Go right now in Jesus' name. We release the fire, amen, from the east, the west, the north, and the south. That fire burns, 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 it purifies. It causes, hallelujah, God to begin to dwell in a purified place that's cleansing and are sanctified. Praise God, and that's able to uh, cause his word to begin to produce. So I pray that that word that we hear today produce and comes forth to our hearts. God, use us to be more loving and more merciful and compassionate. And I thank you for divine wisdom, Father God. Amen. Amen. And we're going to increase in our hunger for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Praise God. Praise God. Glory be to God. Well, let me, uh, we'll go to Exodus, and I'm just going to 
flow with Exodus, maybe 31. Let's see. And I'm going to read a few scriptures and then maybe I can teach for 20 minutes. <clears throat> yeah, we'll turn to Exodus. Anybody need a Bible? Amen. We got security in the house today. Yes, indeed. Yeah, don't, don't, don't mess with me. <laughs> brother, brother, evangelist Eric, he always has my back. Amen. He can fight too. He, he can throw some, throw some hands. <laughs> Somebody trying to come in and trying to get rough with us, you know, he gonna get rough. <laughs> Amen. Got the man of God back there. That's our new security back there as well. Amen. Yeah, we ready. You know what I'm saying? I've been here on 79th Street. Chicago, you gotta have your arsenal. You know, you gotta have the right people to praise, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> praise God. I know that's right. Everybody the castle leaves up. Yeah. Mind in the castle, yes sir. Amen. Yeah, I know that's right. You all got security at your church, uh, uh, Minister Child? You all Absolutely. Got okay. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Do you all got surveillance cameras? Uh, yep. Okay, that's a blessing. Yeah. I believe uh, most ministries are getting surveillance. Those that don't have it, cameras, uh, maybe in the back, in the front. <clears throat> in the hallways, there's a big building. You all got surveillance cameras? Oh, okay, that's good. Okay. And it records like 24 hour intervals? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Lock in the front. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. Uh, anybody need a Bible? I got English translation. Okay. I should try to read from these English translations. I always hold that Bible. I got a finger in the cup. Yeah, so Exodus, uh, let's see, 31. Let me look at my notes. Okay, um, woo. Amen. this is very uh, encouraging. Okay, thank you. So that's the second book in the Bible. And uh, let me see if I can find my... Praise God. So the Lord is speaking to Moses. And he's giving them instructions. Praise God how to set up the priesthood. And so he's teaching them like specifics on what to do. And Moses is laying it out to Aaron. And Aaron is teaching it to the, uh, Levit the Levites, Levitical priesthood. And uh, they're taking notes and recording all of this. Amen. God's words are worthy to be recorded. Amen. Amen. So when you get dreams, praise God, you know, write them down. Uh, visions, you know, get a journal, spiral notebook, a journal, however. But you want to start writing these revelations down. And uh, how many of you all does that? Okay. You all take notes of what God's given you and sharing? Oh, yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yes. I started doing that in the year 2000. Things were so coming to me so fast, so dawned on me. I finally got my attention, you know, and I started. I just brought a regular notebook, so I said, I got to take notes. From this day forward, maybe I may skip a day, but from that day forward, that 2000, possibly uh, February. And so I began to take notes. Praise God, because uh, he put it on my heart to do that. He said, if you value his revelations, and uh, visions, you know, God to see that you're holding that close like a treasure. He said, I can give you more. I, you know, you, I see that you don't take this for granted. I'm going to give you more. And so, amen. He wants us to fill, fill these spirals up and journals up with insight. And I uh, keep it close uh, in a special place. Amen. God's holy words are worthy to be recorded. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. So we're going to look at Exodus. Okay. I know it's the 30th chapter. This is the 31st. Okay, that's good. Okay. 
Okay, we was praying for so many on the prayer line. I went into overtime on the prayer line yesterday. <laughs> Didn't intend to do that. Exodus 29. And uh, I want to read from uh, English. So, uh, how many King James we got today? One. I got a King James. You got a King James or like a new one? New King James. You got a new King James? Is it, oh, Exodus uh, uh, 29. 29. Woo. So it says, uh, God is speaking. Okay, Exodus 29 and verse 1. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. Amen. Amen. Take one young bullock and two rams without blemish, and unleavened bread and cakes unleavened tempered with oil, and the wafers unleavened, anointed with oil, of wheaten flour shalt thou make them. And thou shalt put them into one basket, <clears throat> and bring them in the basket with the bullock and the two rams. Now, it says, Aaron and his sons thou shalt bring unto the door of the tabernacle. God said, bring them in, look closer. Amen? Somebody want to come closer? In the tabernacle, amen. If you're in the right place at the right time, God will bring you in a little closer. Praise God. We want to come closer because you're God's priest, right? Amen. By the New Testament grace, we're God's priest. <clears throat> and shall wash them with water. Okay, Aaron and his sons had to be washed with water. All right, something's about to take place here. <laughs> And thou shalt take the garments and put upon Aaron the goat, the coat, <clears throat> put the coat upon Aaron and the robe of the ephod, beautiful, and, uh, and the ephod and the breastplate, also put that on Aaron, and gird him with the curious, look at that, a curious girdle of the ephod. Amen. We can almost draw that out as God has given it to Moses. We can actually draw this. And thou shalt put the mitre upon his head, put the holy crown upon his mitre. Then shalt thou take the anointed oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. Amen. Somebody say, out loud, God anoint me. Amen. Pour it on my head, God. Amen. And thou shalt bring his sons and put coats upon them. Amen. They're getting coats. God is thickening, thickening, thickening their garments. Not just one layer, come on, but several layers is prepared for Aaron, his sons. Amen. God is really preparing this Levitical priesthood here. Amen. Put them coats on them. And thou shalt gird them with the girdles, Aaron and his sons and put the bonnets on them, and the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statue. Praise God. And thou shalt consecrate Aaron and his sons. Amen. And thou shalt cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron and his sons shall put their heads upon the head of the bullock. Wow. <clears throat> That's very close. They're touching the sacrifice here. Their heads are touching the sacrifice. The heads are touching the heads of the sacrifice. <clears throat> it's very interesting. Thou shalt kill the bullock before the Lord by the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with thine finger, and pour all the blood besides the bottom of the altar, and thou shalt take all the fat that covered in the inward parts, and the call that is above the liver, these are the bullets and the goats. Uh, God, like he's using all the parts of these creatures, their hearts, their livers, their collarbone, and uh, every part of them is being used to fulfill this ritual, this ceremony, and ordin ordinating and cere ceremony toward the, uh, Aaron and his sons, the sacrifices. <clears throat> he's using a lot of parts of these animals not just the blood, you know, but the 
body parts. And it says to burn them upon the altar. But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shalt thou burn with the fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Okay, all of that to this point is a sin offering. Thou shalt also take one ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Praise God. Amen. We're going to skip to uh, verse 26. Exodus 29. Verse 26. Exodus 29. And thou shalt take the breast of the ram and Aaron's consecration and wave it for a wave offering before the Lord. And there shall be their part. And thou shalt sanctify the breast of the wave offering and the shoulder of the heave offering, which is waved, and which is heaved up of the realm of consecration, even of that which is for Aaron, and that which is for the sons. And it shall be Aaron's and his sons by stature forever for the children of Israel. For it is a heave offering. Anybody heard of a heave offering? Amen. You're hearing it today. This is what God required. A heave. So we got some studying to do. We got to check out that word heave. Amen. Mm -hmm. The children of Israel was a sacrifice of their peace offerings. And it shall be a heave offering from the children of Israel, the sacrifice of their peace offerings. And their heave offering unto the Lord. And the holy garments of Aaron shall be his sons after him, to be anointed therein, and to be consecrated in them. And that son that is priest in his steed shall put them on seven days. Amen. When he cometh into the tabernacle of the congregation to minister in the holy place. Amen. A preparation. I'm going to skip down to 46. I didn't know that this was this long. 44. Yes. It says, and I will sanctify the tabernacle of the congregation. This is God speaking to Moses. And the altar, not only the congregation, but the altar is going to be sanctified. I will sanctify also both Aaron and his sons to minister to me in the priest's office. And I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. That's a beautiful thing. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt that I may dwell among them and I am the Lord their God. Praise God. Amen. And so uh, preparation. Amen. We, we are people of uh, preparation. We got to prepare. Amen. For uh, God's his plans that he has for us. Amen. We know that it's a preparation. We have to really prepare and plan and uh, sanctify ourselves. Amen. The scriptures ask and admonish us to sanctify ourselves. Amen. So every day, you know, we got to present ourselves before the Lord and uh, ask God to sanctify. And uh, as Jesus is manifesting his ministry toward us, amen, he's the one that sanctifies us. So uh, the Lord wants us to be in position so we can be in that sanctified place. And uh, after we uh, obey the instructions of the New Testament, praise God. I know this is the Old Testament uh, types of shadows and getting them ready and things like that. And the New Testament, you know, we, we are uh, the sacrifice. Uh, God wants us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. <clears throat> he just doesn't want our gifts and talents or uh, Big offerings, $100 offerings, $1,000 offerings. Some people are blessed to give $20,000. Some people are blessed to give uh, $100,000. Amen. But God said, that, 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 that's good, but I want your heart. Amen. I want your mind. I want your soul. Praise God. And I'm going to teach you how to love me. God will come to us like that. I'm going to teach you how to love me. Because we've been hurt so much by humans. We've been abandoned and taken advantage of by certain people. So, you know, we grow up with those uh, 
human emotions and those remembrances. Amen. Not to love strangers or to be careful around people. And, you know, it just, uh, our upbringing kind of dictates our personalities, our views, and our beliefs because there's just so much evil in the world and so much pain and competition. You know, sometimes people won't even help you when you have needs. You know, you go to people, you need help. Sometimes people will close their door on you. Like um, the strangers did Mary and Joseph. They wouldn't let Mary and uh, Jesus have that baby in that house. Is that how that went? They needed a place for Jesus to lay in a beautiful home, but they, they, they rejected the Savior. Amen. And turned him away and his mama and Joseph. You know, that was a hurtful situation. It was a winter time too. It was cold. Somebody said it was cold outside. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, people, some people are cold. They don't want to. Amen. But by the grace of God, Amen. God will teach us how to love Him in spite of all of our experiences. Amen. Anybody experiencing elevations in love and trust toward God? Not man right now, but God. Anybody has went on a deeper level? Uh, with their relationship with God. Amen. I see you out there. Yeah, because we have to learn how to praise God, to, to love God, and to uh, sacrifice, be that living sacrifice for us. Praise God. And so in the midst of sanctification, amen, uh, Thessalonians talks about that quite a bit. And uh, let's go to 2 Thessalonians. We can go to 2 Thessalonians, and this is what our Apostle Paul was saying to the ch church in Thessalonians. And uh, we get a lot of revelation, teachers that teach the gospel. This has really helped us to understand what man is made of, you know, and what, what we are comprised of, how God put us together. 2 Thessalonians, praise God, and let's see if I can get the correct... Uh, Verse here, we got Philippians, Colossians. Okay, is that First Thessalonians? Yeah, First Thessalonians. That's some good stuff here. Wow. Yeah, let me read from verse 12. First Thessalonians. I'm going to do something here. Which chapter, Pastor? First, first Thessalonians, chapter 5. read from these beautiful Bibles that was given to our church. Amen. A wonderful pastor gave me almost 14. Uh, amen. Hallelujah. And they got some commentary in here to teach you how the Bible was comprised. Okay. There's some deep stuff in this Bible that leads you to the Lord, teach you how to study, and to uh, teach you how to uh, walk in sanctification. This book this is an English standard. A lot of people don't like the English and the uh, internationals. But I'm going to read 2 Thessalonians chapter 5 from this one. 2 Thessalonians. Let me try to hurry this up here. Woo! All right. Okay, 2 Thessalonians. And uh, we're going to encourage you all to sanctify your houses and your apartments this week. Share some information real quick. Amen. Because first we want to get ourselves sanctified. Because we can sanctify buildings and cars and office space. And we can sanctify church. But if we're not sanctified and asking God to deal with us, amen. It's like your works and faith is in vain. Because he wants us to be that carrier of holiness and sanctification by God's grace. And then wherever we go, we can provide sanctification and help uh, do some cleansing in houses. And Oh, what was that, Minister Chad? Oh, uh, you said uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, let's see if I can get this right. 1 Thessalonians. Everybody got it? Chapter 5. I'm the only one I don't have it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, so we can start at... Um, Ooh, this English translation is different. <laughs> but uh, 12, who got the English translation? One, two. Okay, it says, we ask you, that's the English, 
brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. All right, that makes sense, huh? Be at peace among yourselves. I know we fight a lot. Sometimes we fight as brothers and sisters. And uh, it's natural. Sometimes we just don't get along with uh, maybe what I said or what she said. It's just situations that involve in ministry or topics. Democrat, one say maybe a Democrat, one say maybe a Republican, you know. And so maybe it's some contention there. But it, it happens, so we want to strive for peace at the end of that situation. We want to understand that we want to be peaceful, have a peaceful end in some type of way. Amen. If it's not that, that particular, uh, if you can't get peace at the end of that conversation, at least hopefully next week y'all can strive toward peace. Because we all have our ideas and differences and things like that. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, uh, encourage the faint-hearted, Help the weak. Our Bible says be patient with them all. Amen. Patience is very important. Praise God. Because why? God, God was patient with us. Yeah. I said, okay, oh God, he did that for me and waited and was kind. I'm going to be patient towards somebody else. God helped me to be patient. Praise God. I'm going I'm to use this fruit of the Spirit. I'm going to use patience. I'm going to exercise patience. I want to run, I want to do this real quick, and people walking slow, they moving slow, they're not calling me back, but I'm going to exercise patience. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil. All right? <laughs> Somebody say <said>, amen. <laughs> but always seek to do good to one another and everyone. Amen. Rejoice always. Praise God. So that's every day. Somebody said, I don't feel like rejoicing, man. <laughs> I just don't feel like rejoicing right now. But you know what? Sometimes you don't. Hey, man, you just feel like uh, crawling, crawling up in your bed, put the covers over you, just feel kind of bad because it's, it's, you know, because of the situation. And I tell people, it's okay to cry. Nothing wrong with crying. Feel like you want to cry, you know, people told you don't cry and all this. You have to have faith to be strong. Be a lion and a, a strong, mighty man of valor. Virtuous woman of God. Amen. You don't need to be crying about your situation and all bogged down, you know. But uh, it's a time and a season and a place for everything under the sun. And sometimes we got to just mourn. There's more times of mourning. We're not going to be rejoicing all the time. Amen. So it's all right to cry. Amen. If you feel like you want to cry, cry in your car, cry in your bedroom, in your prayer closet, in the bathroom. Amen. Because God got you. Amen. Sometimes we got to let it, let them tears go. Praise God. And uh, you know the angels collect the tears in the bottle. Amen. God sees our plight. He sees our struggle. He sees it, don't He? Remember, I felt like I, I, I sensed he got up when we were shouting. I sensed him stand up on his throne. You know, he's big. Man, when, when you got three, four, what's that, two or three in a mess? And they, man, God, you know what I'm saying? It may not be 100,000 people in the cathedral, in the stadium, but you got three that really know how to praise God. Ooh. Oh, God. Y'all can see in the spirit. Amen. When the praises of God's people begin to be magnified in the congregation. Amen. amen. All right now. So uh, rejoice always. Amen. So after you get through crying, amen, God's going to give you strength. Possibly that same thing to start rejoicing. You may have to faith yourself to rejoice. Just begin to speak the Psalms or something. And encourage yourself and and step out of faith again to just declare or uh, confess a song. You know, and you'll begin to see the joy and the rejoicing begin to come up. But you got to stir it up, amen. Yeah. Praise God, because sometimes we cry all day. The whole day was crying mm -hmm. and mourning. Praise God. And so uh, pray without ceasing. Look at that. Man. Praise God. 
Praise God. What does that mean? Uh, 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 you, you heard secretary? Did y'all hear missionary pick? <laughs> I said, what is a prayer? But she said, don't stop praying. Come on. Amen. Anybody got any revelation or any other added revelation? Praying without ceasing? That's deep. Amen. Everybody like missionary pick? I already spoke, Pastor. <laughs> Amen. It says, give thanks in all circumstances. Wow. Amen. That takes a powerful anointing to do that. Yeah. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Wow. Do not quench the spirit. Mm. That's a whole book right there. That's a book. Glory to God. Do not despise prophecies. You know, we know some church, they don't let you prophesy. You know, some leaders, not in my church. You're not going to be uh, prophesying. You know, some people shut that down. Some leaders, they would shut that down. And uh, why, why would they shut prophecy down? You think some, some bishops or... They didn't read their scriptures. <laughs> they, they didn't read the scriptures? Yeah. Or they didn't honor the scripture if they read it. Okay, sometimes they don't honor the scripture. They see it, but they didn't honor it. Okay. Somebody said something in the back. What was that? Oh, okay. Yeah, because some, some ministry, they shut prophecy down. Uh, praise God. Ooh, you know what this it says? But test everything. Man. <laughs> Isn't that something? And then hold fast what is good. Glory to God. Well, we got to test stuff for Apostle Paul talking to the, to the church of Destiny Life. He talked to the saints, saying, you got to test everything. Oh. <laughs> see if God is in it. Amen. We got to test things to see if God is in that. Amen. Amen. Any, any other wisdom keys? He said, test everything. Praise God. Amen. And so uh, we're going to look at uh, verse 22. I'm in the King James now. Abstain from all appearance of evil. So this is what uh, God was talking to Moses in Exodus 29, to, to break it all down to you. Getting, them, getting Aaron ready and his sons, but glory to be to God, and, and the people that would come before them, they had to wear the robe and the coat for seven days. Those that would be born in the Levitical priesthood, they had to go through the same procedure of being sanctified, consecrated, amen, to even get to the point here where we want to abstain from all appearance of evil, it's not easy. It's not a drop in a bucket. This thing is, uh, takes time to develop, praise God, as you exercise in godliness. Amen. But God will teach us, praise God, how to be able to discern good from evil. And uh, we see appearances of evil and uh, strife. And sometimes you can pick it up quite fast. As a baby Christian, uh, make, take a little time. you got to continue to feed on the milk of the word. Come to church on Sunday. Bible study on Wednesday. You know, if you can't make Wednesday, make sure you get there Sunday. Amen. So you can continue to build yourself up in the Word and let that corporate anointing empower you so you can be uh, trained and equipped by God's apostles. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. And the, and the ministers, they can work with you so you can be able to get to the point where you can be strong and know how to abstain from evil. Uh, when you uh, sin as a Christian, amen, the Bible uh, tells us to repent, amen, confess it before God, because uh, we all fall short. We all have sinned, every Christian, all leaders in the earth, we all sin. Sometimes we sin currently, amen, the devil want to uh, put condemnation on us and guilt, say, you know, you, you, you're not an effective minister, or here, get to the place and say, we're not saved. Look at you, you done sin, and you are supposed to be a man of God, a woman of God, and now how you gonna preach tonight? 
how you going to uh, do the evangelistic crusade when all that sin on you? You're not saved. That's the devil. Amen. All saints, we're going to fall short. It's just part of the process. Somebody say, it's just part of the process. And so, amen, the Bible admonishes us to repent from that sin. Amen. Take it to God and confess with your mouth openly what you did. And I'll begin to ask God for forgiveness. And I'll, yeah, God will wash you with that blood, right? And he cleanses, and sanctify, sanctify, purify. Amen. And then what will happen? He'll cleanse us after that from all, remember that, unrighteousness. Amen. And then we can begin to just put our arms around God and, and just receive that new beginning, that fresh start. And God said, just go home. Keep, keep on and see what the end is going to be. Because I'm still with you. Amen. A just man falls seven times. A just woman falls seven times. But amen, what happens, they don't just stop there and be consumed by the devil and ate up. They get up. God's mercy allowed that person to get up. Amen. And ask for forgiveness. And they was cleansed. And God made them just because they didn't stop pursuing God in their weaknesses. We get weak sometimes. We tempted every day. Overwhelmed. Sometimes we even get out the bed yet and we already say this here, there, there, you know. <laughs> and especially if you got a cell phone, man, man. You get up in the morning, <laughs> praise God all night, and happen to check the cell phone here and get you two feet off the bed. <laughs> all these beautiful and all these handsome dudes. <laughs> You're like, whoa, I didn't even say my prayer. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, praise God. So uh, amen. God is a God that sanctifies. And there's a name for that, Jehovah. I don't know if it's Mechadesh, but we're going to get that. Jehovah what? The God. Oh, okay. Yeah, he got so many redemptive names. My God. <clears throat> and so uh, sanctification starts with, uh, amen, it starts with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And then we, by faith, we receive it. We do this in God's strength, not in our own, not in our own sanctification, not in our own righteousness, and not in our own grace, but all this is from God. We receive his righteousness, we receive his grace, we receive, amen, his sanctification and cleansing his wisdom, his redemptive, through Christ, amen, by faith, by grace, amen. Praise God. And stay from all parents of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you holy. Amen. And I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. Amen. So that's what God is leading us to, our spirit, soul, and body to be uh, preserved and blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, God can do it. God can do it. Amen. And say, we won't let him do it. Praise God. Now, this is what you do when you uh, sanctify your, your house. I wish I could send this to somebody's email and have them read it. But uh, praise God, when you are uh, sanctifying your home, how many of you all uh, sanctified a house before or an apartment or a business? Maybe you was with two ministers and y'all began to sanctify. Okay, a short, long story short, uh, I couldn't sleep for three days. Uh, I was working nights. And uh, it was just demon spirits, really, uh, attacking and plaguing me down and trying to break me down, trying to get me fired. Because that job I use, that's my seed. I was sowing seed. I get paid. I have my seed and my tithe getting me ready. Right. Pray God the devil wanted to get me fired because, you know, I couldn't perform with no sleep. And so I can sleep good on the job, though. But I get home, man, I had three days, the worst sleeping spell I ever encountered. And so uh, we came to a point where my, I almost got fired. But by the grace of God, the supervisor, amen, he somehow away supernaturally had mercy on me because I was sleeping in the back closet. And Bow Wow the, um, entertained a rapper, had a concert at the plaza that Saturday night, you know, so that whole plaza was jumping. And, and man, people were all over were in the parking lots and inside the mall on uh, 95th and Western. That night, you know, we, and he was telling us to get your sleep, make sure you, you know, do what you have to do, because we got serious work to do. And then that place was towed up. Flower pots, uh, dirt paper, nacho cheese, spilled water, oh, shit. 
year 2000. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yes, indeed. And so uh, supervisors prepped us because that was a big day for the plaza and things like that. So, you know, so I couldn't get my sleep. That's about the third day. But uh, the supervisor got on me. He didn't fire me. He didn't send me home. He just uh, bawled me out and scolded me. Mm -hmm. I was staring away from him. All the work because I was working in my own space because I was so embarrassed. But thank God I didn't get fired. And so uh, what happened, uh, so I got two ministers to team up with me. We began to anoint the house, take authority over the devils and the spirit, which is all kinds of uh, forces trying to take us out and stop us from being productive. So amen, as you get a saint with you, it doubles the power of something about two. Amen, that's two in agreement. The quickest way to get a breakthrough is get a saint that's born again and pray with them. Have them agree with you. It's the quickest way to get a breakthrough is get one person that is a born again Christian and then they can begin to touch and agree and things like that. Agree is touch. So while uh, we walked all the rooms in the house and it broke. That demon power was broke. That spirit, that demon for whatever it was, amen. The thing brought was able to sleep good from, the, the, from that day on out. Praise God. So uh, when you all begin to sanctify the houses, praise God, just look for a uh, skull. You want to get skeletons out your house. You want to get snakes, uh, maybe uh, pictures of dragons. Amen. You want to begin to ask God to show you uh, what needs to be removed. Uh, gargoyles, little creatures. Sometimes we have them in our houses. Uh, certain uh, souvenirs from different islands. You know, uh, all kinds of different statues and these uh, strange looking symbols, pictures. So you want to get dragon pictures out of your home, snakes and things like that, pictures of clothes, um, demonic movies. They got a lot of demonic and cursing and extreme violence. You know, uh, the enemy can be attached to that in your home as far as sanctifying your house, amen? Uh, because God wants to inhabit. He want to inhabit our home where we are. And apartments, he want to live there. And the angels wants to, you know, have that as a place to land so they can, they can have a station port to be able to do quicker business. You know, God will bring us to this place as we sanctify our home. So, you know, that's one of the first things I ask God to show you what needs to be removed. There's a lot of strange jewelry out here in the earth yeah. with strange symbols. Yeah. Amen. Can you all help me with some symbols? Uh, maybe maybe be a strange necklace with the emblem of something wicked, you know. So kind of name some things before we close out here. Uh, certain stars that you pray God to let God ask you to see if that star is all right, if it's if it's acceptable, if it's not. That's the first thing I ask God to show you: what to remove out of your basement, closets, bedrooms, living room, maybe some furniture and lamps. <clears throat> Uh, if you buy clothes from the Goodwill, thrift shop, things like that, amen, take authority over the bad memories in the clothes and the negative energy that might have uh, operated through the clothes and the fabric. Or if that, that was owned by a person that was very wicked, you want to cast that devil out that shirt, them pants, them shoes, that coat, that dresser, mattress, television, whatever it is, Amen. Don't feel like you're extreme and you're too radical. Just humble yourself, amen, and just begin to sanctify it. Amen. So take authority over that negative energy, that bad memory, and that evil spirit that may be clapping to that, to that jewelry, uh, that watch, those clothes. Amen. Cast it out and command that thing to go. And then begin to apply the blood of Jesus over the items. And, uh, Satan has got to sanctify, purify, and cleanse it. And then release the anointing into it. Amen. To bless that thing. Some people do that with their food. One lady said, she blesses her food before she uh, brings it in her home. I said, wow. I never heard of that before. She went to Peace Produce, I think, and she blessed the oranges, the apples, the steak, the raisins, Crisco oil, you know, the biscuits, honey. The bread, the spaghetti, and she sanctified all that stuff before, because I had to help her bring it in the house. And I said, wow, I've never heard nobody say nothing like that before. That's very interesting. Amen. So 
That's what the Lord told her to do. So in the midst of your home, go to every room in your home or apartment, amen, and begin to ask God to show you what needs to be removed, amen, certain skulls, snakes, scorpions, um, dragons. Sometimes we have dragons on our clothes. And so that's a symbol of that enemy. And we, hmm? Paintings? Yeah. What else? Certain drawings, okay. Silverware. You know, things like that. So you God will re re honor your request to be able to show you, show you what needs to be removed. Praise God. And so after you take authority over it, amen, cast the devil out. Write this down if you can. Cast out the bad memories in your walls, floors, and ceilings because that house that you purchased or apartment could have been owned by somebody that's very wicked. And they maybe opened up portals in your basement doing some strange Ouija board or some Wicca or some strange witchcraft practices in that home that you love and your husband. And your, you know what I'm saying? The previous owner, my God, what, what could they have been doing? And so it happens. Am I right? It I heard about Dungeons and Dragons game. Yeah. Uh, my, my can invite some, uh, mm -hmm. some uh, unwanted guests. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes. That's what her um, yeah. Books, witchcraft books in your homes. Hey, get that Ouija board out your home. Oh, yeah. We played with the Ouija board in the 80s. So, you know, definitely we had, to, we had to renounce some stuff and begin to ask God to break covenants and agreements and oaths that we made, you know, not knowing. So, uh, yeah, so things like that, you all kind of understand what I'm saying. But I'll take authority over the bad memories, the negative energy, and the evil spirits that may have uh, operated in that room and it, that, that energy and memory stuck in those walls. Walls can hold it because it was created by God. Walls got sound waves. Walls have light. It was created by the voice of God. So that's why uh, bad memories and energy, evil, they can begin to intermingle and enter into walls, floors, and ceilings. Even um, chairs and things like that. You want to cast the uh, bad memory, cast that bad memory out, the devil, and negative energy. Amen. And begin to rebuke it and cast it out of every room. Some people do this every day. Some people do it uh, summer, uh, fall, winter, and spring. Some people do a major cleansing four times a year. Some do it every day because they have a deliverance ministry and they got an open house for taking their homeless and taking their people that need help. And they got a big facility. God bless them with a facility to, to help uh, the homeless and the less fortunate. They got home. So they do a deliverance every day, that team, because they bring it in sick people. Folks that's, you know, they don't want to get delivered yet, but by the grace of God, they're still helping them. Amen. Some, some people just don't want to get delivered yet. They're not on that level, but by the grace of God, the saints take them in and minister to them. One day they wake up next year, I want to get delivered now. You know, you're showing them love here. They say, I want to get, I want to get this, uh, this spirit of addiction out of me. You know what I'm saying? I'm ready to uh, get delivered from, uh, Amen. This, this gambling spirit. I always want to gamble. I'm just, I'm just overtaken by this guy. I want to get delivered from lack and poverty. You know, whatever it may be. Praise God. And so after you begin to take authority, release the anointing. The, uh, after you get rid of the, the uh, evil spirits, the memories of the negative energy, uh, begin to release the blood of Jesus over all the walls, the doors, the floors and the ceilings, and every room, basement, upstairs, even outside your uh, windows and the front door, back door, and the basement door. You want to release the blood of Jesus over it. I have the Lord to cleanse it with the blood. Release the anointing. I'll, I'll send this to your inbox if y'all want it. And, uh, and uh, if you all didn't get that, I can send it to your inbox, the email, house cleansing. And then uh, release the anointing, release glory, and begin to close any portals that may have been opened. 
Sometimes, like I say, your previous owner of that house and that home and that car, you got to close them portals because they've been operating with some demons with all these strange names and werewolves <laughs> demons and, and all kinds of radical looking dragons and snakes and operating in that home or apartment for a long time in that car. 